Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today is our second video of our semantic kernel learning video series. And we are going to talk about prompts and prompt engineering. And in last video, we discussed about how we can use or set up the semantic kernel SDK, how we can leverage the open AI service models to respond to get the responses within our Visual Studio console application. And how you actually learn how you can start working with a semantic kernel in nutshell. So just to brief, semantic kernel is a lightweight AI programming framework that allow us to integrate the large language models into our applications and make them more intelligent. And if I go to my topics slide, then the second slide which we are going to talk about today is about prompts and how to read the prompts from file. So as you may already be knowing that prompts are nothing but it refers to the input which is given to the LLMs, large language models to guide what to generate, what response to generate. So it typically has instructions, has questions and also like the sometimes we also include the example of output which we are expecting. And prompts we can use to define the task, answer questions, summarizing content, generating text. So this is nothing but like you are already familiar what are prompts but we are going to focus more on prompt engineering because writing a or designing a good prompt or an effective prompt is essentially a desired is required to have your LLM to give you the right set of data which you are expecting. It involves the selecting of right words, phrases, symbols, format so that it can generate a high quality relevant data for you. And in our context, like where we are working with semantic kernel SDK, so our intent is to design the intelligent applications. Consider an example of flight booking system where we want to design the predefined prompts for our application and would be reading the input from users so that we can pass on the same input which we receive via our prompts to the our native application to APIs and get the response back. So it's a combination of native traditional APIs plus this AI services which we are going to incorporate. So I'll just go to my Visual Studio. So in last video, what we did was like we created a sample SK application which was in console. We added this op semantic kernel NuGet package so that we can refer it. And then later on, we passed on our API key and the model name so that we can create an instance of our builder and then later on we were reading the prompt from console and passing that to invoke the console so that we can get the result but in this video we are going to read the prompts from file so that we can write effective prompts and number of prompts which are which make sense to our application so over here, I created this sample console application as leave SK app. That means that we are going to build one leave application and do one in our entire video series. So we'll start with writing the effective prompts from our text file and reading them from our text file using the template which semantic kernel provides. So I'll start with by creating one folder so that we can group everything inside folders, which makes sense to us. I'll just add one folder and I'll call that as prompts and I'll create one subfolder as well which I will say leave request and in this leave request we are going to add our template files and I will add two files to it one file is configuration file and the other file would be the text file where we would be writing the prompt into natural language I'll just add new item configuration and I'll add one more file and that I would say as escape prompt .txt. and as it created with class so I'll just remove this for both of the file so now I have two files so this configuration file is meant to give me the configuration settings such as function parameters function name and we can define our max rate and as well as we can define what temperature you want to put in which means that relevant data or the relevant score 
or a relevancy of that data. So I'll just copy one sample JSON to my this config JSON so that we can just transform that to our need. So I have copied this and pasted this sample JSON file which is describing that it's a deep request and max tokens would be 500 and temperature 0.7 and input variables and these variables are leave type I would be expecting my prompt to have this leave type which leave I want to apply and the start date of that leave and as well as I can specify the end date is config file you can create and along with that we'll have one text file that should be in this escape prompt format only because we are going to use the templating from semantic kernel and the templating which it follows with double curly braces dollar and then input so it consider that as input so we can create our own custom template file also but we have to later on while reading this prompt we have to replace our uh, decorators with the actual input so rather than that like we can use the sk prompt text formats the templates which is predefined so i'll just copy this template as well or we can write our template as well please apply leaves leave of type and this is type which we are going to pass from our argument and from starting date and over here we'll be saying the start date and till and end date of our leave. So this is how in plain text file in the natural language we can specify you can give you can very well add the examples that if somebody is going to add the exam add leave like this then you should do this so AI assistance do this so you can add the messages user please apply this leave a sample for this prompt text but it's also fine like you will leave it like this so once we created these our files under this prompts leave request we'll go back to our program file and where we are going to start reading the prompts from our text file so over here i will just remove this prompt which we are reading from console read line so now later on we are going to read that from our read file so i'll just say pair prompts and this i am going to read from my kernel dot import plugins from directory import plugin from prompt directory and we are going to specify the path of our prompt and this is our prompts directory so we have specified and now it will load our this prompts plugin from this directory and, and now I am going to create this kernel arguments so that these arguments we can provide so I'll just say kernel args and we'll just create kernel arguments and this is nothing but dictionary so we will be adding the variable name and the variable input variable name which we created in our this config json so we'll just copy this variable name and we'll just say this leave type and we'll just create this leave type variable over here and i'll just say sick leave so that we can pass this leave type as an input as sick leave and then the second variable is our start date and we'll just say start date and i'll just again do this where start date equal to i'll specify the start date as 2024 and we'll say 11th and 11 i want the start date as coming monday and i just set that to my input start date and end date the same day i'll be taking just one day sick leave then we'll say end date and this one also we just say end date so we have specified this kernel arguments now the next part is we are going to invoke this from our invoke prompt async function invoke async function so i'll just replace this as invoke async and over here we are going to specify this prompts 
and we'll specify which prompt we want to invoke and this prompt is our leave request prompt leave request and the second parameter is the kernel arguments so it's we have created kernel arguments we will just run this and see what result we are getting so we'll just put a breakpoint over here we'll just first of all see like whether our prompt is loading from this plugin directory or not so we'll just kind of put a breakpoint over here so i'll just run this and this directory is not found because we missed to copy always for properties of these two files i will just say this will select both of the file and in build action copy to output as always and now we are going to run this and this time it loaded well it found our prompts if i do a over on my prompts variable you will see that these are loaded up and we'll just set up this variables and kernel arguments it's going to build kernel arguments and over here we'll just wait for our result to process and in this result i am sorry ai language i am not authorized to apply for your leaves kindly contact your hr department supervisor so our prompt processing is done very well it went very well because it's saying that the model is returning that is not authorized so that's that's intended so our objective of writing or reading the prompts from our text file is achieved over here now in next video i am going to read this session uh, this input and we'll just create our native plugin and with that plugin we are going to apply that leaf into our system and then we'll respond that back so this part we are going to do it in next video today's video's objective was just to like let you know how you can read the prompts because we are going to have more prompts created over here for approval leave as well where we are going to uh, create prompt for let's say like approving the leave with a predefined format so i can just quickly create that so that in next video we can directly start working with it so i'll just create one more folder and over here say approve leave leaves and we'll just copy both of the files and modify the content to our our need so i'll just say leave request it's a approve leave request and over here we are going to use other other variable types for example that the owner of the leaf while requesting or while replying back so we'll just change those variables and in this prompt i would say let's say for a one so i'll just say your leaf request is approved from and then again you can use the same variables start date and till and date and in case of rejected again you will say leave rejected and this entire template you can pass on to your large language model so that they can write professional overview or like respond back to do your fab app or chat api whatever the chat box you have created so we'll just see this into next part creating a plugin and then doing the end-to-end -end creation of leave and responding back as well so that is it for today's video if you have any questions please do drop your comments i'll try to answer Thank you.